today uh, we're going to be talking about some of the parameters we've been thinking about in our uh, preliminary search for a liveaboard sailboat. So we're going to talk about different styles of hulls and different features of boats and price points and that kind of thing. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing we really need to think about is budget and get a rough idea of uh, what we're going to need to spend. We still don't have a number in mind, but there are a couple of ways to go. First uh, idea would be to buy a really cheap boat, small number of dollars and uh, needs a lot of uh, fix up work and that kind of thing. The advantage with that situation is you don't have a lot of depreciation, you may not need to buy insurance for the boat because it's you may need liability insurance, you probably don't need collision type insurance because if the boat sinks, you might be upset, but you know, you, you haven't lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, one of the downsides might be that you have to do a lot of work to get the boat up to where it needs to be, um, and that takes a lot of time, and potentially yeah, a lot of people underestimate the amount of refitting and work that needs to be done, and so you might not end up with a much better deal. So the other alternative is to go with a nicer, potentially newer, but potentially or and or better quality boat. So flip side of all those other arguments, now you might need to have insurance on the boat because it's a significant part of your net worth. Still, there's always work that needs to be done on the boat. So while you're saving some, you're not saving everything. You're not gonna get the perfect boat. Um, I don't know what those numbers are yet uh, for us, but uh, that's one of the decisions that needs to be made. So the other major decision that needs to be made is the difference between a monohull sailboat, which is what you think of when you think of a traditional boat with one hull or a mass like this, and a catamaran, which is more like, you can think of it almost like two boats strapped together, where you have two narrow hulls, and then there's a big area in between. With a, a monohull sailboat, generally, uh, they might sail a little bit better, so you can sail a little bit closer to the wind, you have a bit more flexibility. Some people like the motion of a monohull sailboat a little bit. There's a lot less room, you can see, you can see there's a lot less room on this one than there is on this one. Now, you can spend a lot of money and get a really nice big monohull boat, but, um, and, and catamarans aren't cheap either, but, and I haven't done the, run the numbers to see what the equivalent for the, about the same quality, what the equivalent per square footage price is, but I'll bet it's probably not that far off. So maybe instead of getting a bigger, fancier monohull, you could get a smaller, maybe not quite nice um, catamaran and maybe it'd be about the same price per square foot. One of the nice things about, one of the good and bad things about a catamaran, normally they have, because they have two hulls and only have two engines. So that's bad from the standpoint that now you have two engines you need to maintain, but good from the standpoint that if one of your engines is down, you can still use the other one. So they're more uh, they're more maneuverable in really tight situations. The other thing to remember too is, is that when your boat is your home, uh, you 95% of the time you're just sitting in one place, right? So the slightly better sailing ability of this hull isn't necessarily that much of an advantage over this one. Other minor details, uh, catamarans tend to draft less so that you can go into shallower water with them, which means you can anchor more places. Mm -hmm. They're also a lot wider, obviously, though, so uh, sometimes when you're hauling them out of the water or you need to uh, be in a marina for some reason, sometimes that's a lot more money. A lot of the boats that they use for um, charters now, especially in the Caribbean, are uh, catamarans, which means there's a lot of them available, but they're built to be charters. So they cram a lot of cabins and a lot of heads into a relatively small boat. So to make it more livable for a couple, you have to do a bunch of, you know, tearing out extra heads and converting cabins and stuff like that. So there's, there's a lot of, that. This one's, a, this one's a major decision, and this is almost like PC, Mac, or you know a semi-religious debate. People have very strong opinions. Uh, another thing to consider just is, is overall size. Now the equation is a little different from a catamaran versus a monohull in terms of length, but let's go back to monohulls for a minute here. You can you can go with something really small. Now that's generally going to be a little bit cheaper. You can go with something kind of mid-size. That's your cost is going to go up as your length increases. The cost of maintaining the boat and its, its livability and usability don't go up linearly. The longer it gets, the more expensive it gets. It's a 40-foot boat is a lot more to run than a 30-foot boat, but it also has a lot more room and it's a lot more uh, livable potential. 
you, know, you get over 45 feet, something like that, now you're starting to get into, you can't get into all the marinas you might want to, you get over 60 feet, maybe you can't get on a mooring bowl that you want to because the boat gets too big, and it starts to get really expensive once you get up to that So Regardless of what style we go with, you're probably looking at something in the middle range. So that might be a 43-foot monohull, or maybe a 38-foot uh, catamaran, something in that range. Good news is, is there's a lot of those around. Another thing to consider, not so much these days, um, would be the sail plan. Most boats that we would consider have this simple plan where we have a mainsail behind the mat, behind a single mast and then some one or more uh, head sails, uh, jib sail out front. Historically, um, and this wouldn't be so much of a consideration for us because we're probably not looking at something that old, you might have had a situation where you have a shorter uh, main mast and you have a mizzen mast on the back. This would be a catch or a yawl. Um, and so the head sail is a little smaller, the main sail is a little smaller, and then you have this mizzen sail on the back. The reason for this plan versus this plan is for the same amount of sail area, you have small, smaller masts and you have smaller sails. So smaller sails mean that, that you might have the same sail area, but because it's spread over three sails or more, uh, they're smaller and they're easier to handle. The other nice thing about these setup is, uh, especially if you have a mizzen sail back before uh, electric autopilots, um, you'd have a wind vane situation for doing your steering when you're not at the helm the whole time. And mizzen sails are pretty good for set up for that kind of uh, sort of uh, manual autopilot. There's a lot more boats like this now than there are like this, but that, that is a consideration. Another thing to consider is the uh, type of keel that you have. So back in the day, again, back when those cruises are running around and you know it's with a sail plan like this, Everybody would say that if you're going to do ocean crossings, you need to have a full keel like this. So nice thing about this, it protects the rudder uh, from any you know underwater objects. If you're you know in your, if you're ground the boat or if you hit something underwater, your rudder is protected. Um, that, so and so those are the advantages of this. The disadvantages is very heavy, uh, impossible almost to back up. If you've got more of a, a modern type keel, you have something like this. I, I forget what this is called, but if it's called like a it, this would be like a spade rudder on the back, so there's nothing really protecting it between the, the uh, keel and where the rudder is. You know, people talk about, wow, well, you get stuff yeah. caught around yeah. it. Um, you know, you can have a, a deep one like this or a shallow one like this. A deeper keel lets you sail, um, you know, a little bit closer to the wind. It's sort of better performing. Most people that have been around um, for a while t are going to tend to favor this situation where you have a shorter keel. You get into more... Uh, anchorages, um, you're not giving up very much. There aren't too many people that I've seen on the message boards and stuff that would favor a, a deeper kill these days. So again, another thing about the catamaran, they draft less because they don't really, they have short keels, but they don't have anything anything like this. So what is it? What is a catamaran keel? Because they've got two. So yeah, there's like one on each hull and it looks more like this. So, so in fact, it's shorter than this. The, the reason that a monohull needs the keel is as it Say out the mast is pushing the boat over. The keel is there to kind of provide a, a riding yes. moment to bring it to be yeah, to bring it into balance with a catamaran. You're not completely flat, but as you start to heel, you have this entire second so, hull yeah. that kind is pulling weighted. you back down to to where you need to be. The bad thing about this is, is if it goes all the way over, now you're now there's now you're stable upside down. But most of the catamarans that they build now, uh, these are actually. It will stay afloat and it's survivable inside the hull. So you can actually. Oh, you can live upside down. You can, not pleasantly, but you can live yeah. upside down. Now, with a monohull, uh, when this one goes upside down, the idea is that this is completely unstable upside down because you have this big heavy keel that's now on the top side. So it will eventually pull itself back over. So I hope you enjoyed our discussion of features and price points uh, for sailboats. Um, if you did, please subscribe. See you next week.